In this video, we're going to talk about the three types of heat transfer that you need to know for an MCAT. Conduction, convection, and radiation. So to begin, let's look at conduction. Conduction is heat transfer by direct contact. So for example, you can take an object at a higher temperature and bring it into contact with an object at lower temperature. When these two objects are brought into contact, heat will be transferred from the object of higher temperature to the object of lower temperature. The reason why this works is you have to remember that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a system. So that means the molecules in the object of higher temperature, they're moving faster, whereas the molecules in the quarter object, they're moving slower. When these two objects are brought into contact, the molecules in both objects will collide with each other. And the faster moving molecules in the hotter object will transfer their energy to slower moving molecules when they collide. So that's how the heat transfer occurs by direct contact. Now, in the situation I just described, you were probably thinking of solids, right? A solid object with another solid object in contact with each other. And yes, that absolutely works. Conduction can occur with solids, but can also work with liquids as well as gases. So as one example, you can consider washing your hands. If you wash your hands in hot water, your hands feel warm by conduction, right? Direct contact of the hot water with your colder hands. Okay, so that's conduction. And the key thing to keep in mind with conduction is that it's heat transfer by direct contact. So that's the most important part to remember. Direct contact is required. All right, so now let's take a look at convection. Convection is heat transfer by the motion of molecules in a fluid. Now, a fluid, you need to be a little careful here. Usually when we use this term on a day-to-day -day basis, we usually think of fluids as referring specifically to liquids. But that's not the case. When it comes to physics, fluid refers to both liquids and gases. All right. So how does this work? Well, let's consider an example. Let's say in my hand there is a candle and the candle has a flame. Now it's true, if you were to take your other hand and you touch the flame of the candle, you would get burned. You know, that would be heat transfer by conduction. However, if you were to put your hand, let's say half a meter above the candle so that your hand is not in direct contact with the flame, your hand half a meter above the flame would still feel some warmth, right? Which is interesting. You're not in direct contact with the flame, but yet you're feeling warmth from the flame. And the reason why you're feeling warmth is because of convection. The candle's flame is heating up the air molecules, the gas molecules around it. When gas molecules are heated, they expand. And when the gas molecules expand, they become less dense. And they become less dense, they're going to float up and rise. So essentially the warmer molecules will rise up to your hand so you feel the warmth. And also at the same time, colder molecules, which are then more dense, will sink. And when the colder molecules sink, then they too will get heated up by the flame and then eventually they will rise up as well when they become less dense. So conduction is this process where the warmer parts of the fluid expand and rise and the colder parts sink. Okay. Now, in the example I talked about, that was with the candle and the convection was occurring through the gas molecules moving up. So that was with gases. This also works with liquids. So with liquids, a common example is if you are boiling a pot of water. So when you boil a pot of water, the metal is hot, right? It's getting heated up by the flame or whatever heat source you're using. The metal will heat up the bottom layer of water molecules in the pot by conduction, direct contact. But once the water molecules at the bottom of the pot become hot, those liquid molecules will expand and they become less dense and they will rise to the surface. So essentially the heat being transferred up by the motion of those warm fluid molecules. 
the colder molecules on the top will sink and they too will get heated. So you get this continuous cycle of warmer fluids moving up, colder molecules moving down, and they continue until everything becomes very hot. All right, so this can occur with liquids and gases, but this does not work with solids, and that's because solids do not expand when they are heated to the same degree as liquids and gases. Okay, so finally, let's take a look at our last type of heat transfer, which is radiation. Radiation is heat transfer using electromagnetic waves. You recall that electromagnetic waves is essentially talking about light. And light is not just the visible light spectrum or UV light that we're thinking of, but it encompasses the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So that includes radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, visible light, UV light, X-rays, and gamma rays. And the way this works is that when the electromagnetic waves strike an object, that object will absorb that wave and the energy associated with that electromagnetic wave. So the most common example, of course, is thinking about us right here on the Earth. We can feel the radiation from the sun, which is super far away from us. Uh, and that occurs only if we're outside and standing in the way of the solar rays. Right, and something very interesting about this is if we can feel radiation from the sun, you have to recognize that means the electromagnetic waves being released from the sun are traveling all the way through space towards us. Now, space is a vacuum, right? Within space, there are no molecules, so there's no solids, liquids, or gases. And this is what makes radiation unique. This method of heat transfer can occur without a medium. It doesn't require solids, liquids, or gases to occur. And that's different from conduction and convection. Both conduction and convection require a medium. However, it's not that radiation can't occur with a medium. Certainly, if we're here on the Earth and we have radiation from the sun, once it gets to the Earth and travels through the air, it's traveling through a gas. Same thing if you're standing inside a building. The solar rays can still travel through the window, which is a solid, but it's transparent, so the solar rays can transmit through it. And the same is also true for liquids, right? Light can also travel through water, so radiation can work with transparent solids, liquids, or gases, and of course, also a vacuum with no medium. All right, those are the three types of heat transfer.